Hello folks, uh, in this video we will cover a very interesting topic of asset management module. Uh, it's called asset KPI. So what is asset KPI? So asset KPI is a report or inquiry form which is a combination of an information giving 360 degree view of an asset. Uh, a lot of transaction capturing against of the assets and while you're uh, capturing those transactions and some activities and some performance and it's showing to you the assets KPI indicator okay so let's see the demo there are a lot of formula in the back so before we move we need to understand a little bit of formulas there uh, and from there we gonna we're gonna jump into the system and we'll see that how does it go actually and we are also sometime going to use excel and i have created an excel which has all the information how the whole calculation going to be work and from there we're going to see how how it is it's a very very key uh, report for every um, assets if an assets management module implemented that's a key report where a customer is looking for so before I move, there are certain fields. There are 33 fields are there on the reports. And I will explain you field by field and what does it mean actually and how it is got calculated from the certain data sets which I have used. Okay, All right. So let's go to the system. So I'm back to my system. I have created a set of data. Uh, against one of my assets <clears throat> so in the general tab you can find there is something called asset KPIs and similarly if you want a you know, entire data <clears throat> under inquiry there is called asset KPIs so we will go with one set of data I'll just run this one so it's it you have a time scale day weeks and hour based on that you want to run so I am taking one set of data from 1st January 2020 to 3rd June of uh, 2020 and it is included in my particular assets and let's run and you'll see that there a set of data is coming here okay and what does it mean how this data got calculated and where the data is coming from so which we need to understand here uh, so asset is very very clear right asset is the asset code here if you see assets what is the type what is the manufacturer what is the module right and what is the time scale I have taken so I taken the time scale from 1st January to 3rd July uh, 3rd June so how many days are there so it is 155 days I have 55 days my asset is performing 24 by 7 so it's multiplied by 24 if you see it's going to become 3720 that's the total time of the performance so let me go back to my excel here you see that this is the assets and this is the exponent okay. so the total time means your total days number of working hours so my working hours in the calendar is 24 and it's multiplied by uh, 155 days uh, which I have taken the scale so um, just to remember um, these particular assets uh, if we if if we see in the assets if the asset is linked to a resource resource is nothing but a production resource which is we are uh, working in uh, if you're working in production environment then that's a that's a different calendar if there is no calendar on the resource on that particular assets the asset is not linked to a resource then it will take uh, the calendar which you have set it up in the asset management parameter so in my cases this asset is not linked to any resource it's taking the calendar from asset management and it has 24 hours uh, uh, working hours so it's a non-stop uh, 24 by 7 it's work so this is what it is right what is uptime what is downtime downtime is nothing but the total downtime so how this downtime going to be work so this downtime basically how many times you have taken the down right so let's go and check the data here so you can see the maintenance downtime so here is time so 3 hours 4 hours and 12.8 so this is basically 19 hours right 
and now you can run that report. I think it's better. I just this way and open up another uh, screen. So it will be more helpful to show it to you the data. <coughs> to complete. And uptime is mean that total time minus downtime is equal to uptime. Yeah, all right. Now, if we go back to our Excel, so these four formulas are clear, right? Uh, repair time, the total number of hours consumed on the repair. So this is coming from the maintenance request. Uh, if you create a maintenance request um, against of the asset and whatever the hour you are consuming, it's going to be come down over here. So what is, how does this going to be post? Uh, just to uh, remember, for any assets, whenever you post the hour, the hour must be goes to the ledger. Uh, because in the project accounting, we have a set up not ledger, uh, and post to ledger, post to PNL and all this. So if you select not ledger then this hour never going to be come here so it must be posted financially then it will come over here right uh, <clears throat> so in this asset let's go and check this asset and see how many hours has been posted against of that assets and find out this nine hours for the explanatory purposes There are some hour transactions here, uh, which is nothing but uh, 4 hour, uh, 4.5 hours, 4.5 hours here. So it's actually registered uh, here, <coughs> nine hours. So availability, availability is 99.49%. So there is a formula in the back. If we go back to our Excel, uh, availability is uptime divided by your total time multiplied by 100 is equal to the result. So if you see this, uh, this divided by this multiplied by 100, so this is going to be the result for you. Right. So then next field is number of fault. So how many faults you have registered against that assets? So in my assets, I think I have registered only one. Uh, so it will come the number of faults you have registered against of an assets. This is the only one I have registered here. So only one fault has been registered here. So the more you increase, the number would be increased automatically. Right? Now MTBF, mean time before failure. That's the formula. That's 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 the that's the name. Mean time before failure, which is the total time divided by number of faults, which is nothing but your total time divided by number of fault. Okay, so you need to remember any mean calculation, it's always uh, uh, assumed there is a one add. Okay, so one add means obviously you have A7, which is one, and that also plus one divided by your total time. So eight. 3720 plus 1 plus 1 because mean always calculate plus 1 always as you okay failure rate failure rate is divided by 1 divided by mtbf so in our cases it would be always 0 so the more number of uh, failure uh, fault um, divided uh, 1 divided by mtbf so the more it would be decreased, the chances of the failure rate are going to be come down over here. Right? So it's also depend on how many number of failure happen. So if we have uh, 80 or 90 failure on that particular period, that means the failure rate would be uh, increased right here. So 
So if you see here, this one is zero right now. So MTR mean time, mean time, mean repair time, which is the repair time divided by the number of fault register on the assets. How we get it that one? So we have this. Uh, sorry, uh, that should be A5. <clears throat> A5 that's my formula is written here wrong it should be a5 this is means the repair time a5 divided by a7 of your number of volts so it is 9 in our cases let's see how many 9 number of stop it is a number how many times you have taken the down we have taken three times so three times came over here so <clears throat> we'll go to the MTBS MTBS is mean time between stop which is the total time divided by number of maintenance downtime so how much is your total time 3720 again you have three stop and plus again because it's a mean so plus one always so it is 3720 divided by four <clears throat> right so preventive cost the total cost you have incurred against the preventive maintenance total cost you have incurred about the corrective maintenance those informations are there so and any replacement cost you have replacement value you have uh, in the asset master it will come over here so there are a few more things we need to understand about this report So asset type, manufacturing and those things I given, the asset scale I have already talked about. Our time scale have taken hour when we run the things. The availability, up time divided by total time, right? So <clears throat> availability is, the asset availability time is, uh, what is the percentage of availability time? So total time divided by up time. So it's a 99.49%. How many work orders are there? How many work orders you've created against of this asset? If we come to the assets and see how many work orders are there, we can track it from here. These are all active ones, so we just remove it so you can see that one. So there are three. So two preventive, one corrective. All right. Mm, how many total work order time? So nine plus four, I believe. So it is thirteen. So for uh, for my repairing, I spend nine hours, and for my maintenance, preventive maintenance, I use two hours, two hours. And how many primary work order? So primary work order means you have a primary work order, you have a secondary work order. So all my work order are primary work. Order. If I have any secondary work order, that would be coming over here. Right. Maintenance work order 2. What is maintenance work order? It is nothing but the preventive maintenance. Okay. So I have two preventive maintenance work order here. And how many hours I have consumed? It's a two hours, two hours each I have consumed. So thumb rule is here again. I say time will show if you posted in the GL. Uh, through project account uh, number of fault we have already discussed MTBF I already explained repair work order repair work order is nothing but the corrective work order how many we have we have one so here it's came uh, MTR 9 we already explained uh, failure read we all explained reliability what is reliability this formula is bit critical and how to explain that one so reliability formula uh, you you can see there is an exponential formula is taking calculate based on the expected exponential development of the fall registration on an asset so how does it got calculated you can go, go to the google and write an exponential formula like that so in my cases i have uh, i have uh, my mean time before uh, mean time before failure which is 1860 
uh, in the top this one and I have a total time of 3720 <coughs> 3 times 20 so 1 divided by my mean time before failure <coughs> into my total time of the asset and I put in the exponential formula multiplied by 100 so it is telling my reliability of the asset is 13.53% okay. MTPS, MTPS mean time production stop uh, what is mean time production stop mean time production stop which is uh, there is a uh, formula which is A4 by A11 what is in our A4 A4 is downtime is your 19 hours and A11 is number of your stop so if you divide then automatically it will come over here okay and total cost again so this is the combination of your preventive maintenance cost and the corrective maintenance cost if you do any investment on the assets uh, and it is create and work order based on the investment so it's gonna become separately so if the project type must be investment in the back so it's gonna be calculated so I so it's it's quite important report uh, for um, for every assets and one more trick I just wanted to tell you that uh, whenever you want to run this report you need to remember the asset type the KPI total you should not enable if you enable then the data will not calculate properly so because the KPI in total is different and individuals are different to calculate it. So I disable this one so it's gonna be calculated perfectly. If I enable you can see that that's coming a separate way and all together uh, I don't know how it's going to be explained that. You see no data here right. So if I go back and change it and calculate with my scale and it's back to the other right so I I think I think that's that's what it is uh, in terms of the KPI so in this particular formula there are some formula you can go to the microsoftdoc.com and you can find out asset KPI and that also stated uh, how it can be calculated but I did my own workings and based on those workings I find out all the informations uh, so you guys can utilize that if you want this excel sheet let me know in the LinkedIn so I can I can inbox me there I can send you out my excel template for you guys you guys can utilize that in the better understanding for that okay. I, I hope this video is gonna help you out to explain to your customer how to use as a KPI report uh, it is quite a key uh, report which you can use and you, where your customer can use and if you need more different formula I think it's the best way you can uh, expose the data to Power BI and build a report there uh, this is what available in the standard in asset KPI. I hope uh, this video is gonna be help you out for your forthcoming implementation or to explain to your customer how the K asset KPI report works. Thank you very much for your time.